just when I'm starting to record, there's like a strange vehicle that just pulled into the yard. Into the parking garage. Anyway. Hi, how's it in the name of Christ? How you doing? It's your girl, Cran K. Garabo. Mm -hmm. I hope you are good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're stellar. And I hope you're in a neat little bunch. I'm busy looking at that activity behind. Wondering how it's gonna end. I'm sorry about my hair. It's a real royal mess. But it's not time for me to break down my protective style. I'm gonna keep it for a month. It's not yet the end of the month, so... We're trying to grow hair here, so... What's happening outside? I'm distracted by the distracting activity. Oh, there it goes. In the house. <clears throat> Probably going to install something. Construction vehicles. Anyway, y'all, let me just get straight into it. What's up? Hope you're good. Hope you're peachy. Hope you're Stella. And I hope you're in a neat little bunch. <clears throat> It's Garabo. Um, yeah. And, oh, my hair. I can't. I, I just, I can't. It's so messy. I don't know what to do to make it look less unseemly. Less devastating. Less ridiculous. Mm. I, I really don't know. Garabo, don't pull at your hair like that. It's really gonna give messy. Okay. I think that helps. Does it? Look, let's just move on. Okay. Um, what's up? I'm sorry it took me all that time to start chatting. I'm grateful for today because it's cooler than most other days. It's been violently hot. And that violence is not helpful to anybody's cause. So we are grateful that that violence has been stayed by a cool weather phenomenon. It's been raining, so it helps. But my skin is still glowing. Guys, something is working for my face. I, I use honey and plain yogurt for a moisturizer, like as in I leave it on all day. And like, wow, my skin is popping, it's glowing. It's, it's even giving gloss, like, whoa, okay? It's lightened my hyperpigmentation. Remember here, I used to have that dark thing that was going on, don't know what it was. It's fading, but this here is probably gonna stay for a very long time because I can't stop picking at it. Long story short, there are positive things happening in my life and I'm wondering, and I've been very disillusioned, wondering to God, where's this going? I'm very, very sad all the time. And he then gave me a cornucopia of dreams showing me that it's gonna end well. Like even my hair, it's growing, you guys, it's growing. And um, I love hair, I love hair content. I like watching it, it's very cathartic. I like watching people do DIYs and concoctions on hair and then I experiment. And then I'm like, what's that gonna do for me if I'm dead? I, I, I want my hair to reach bra strap length and then tailbone and yeah, just basically a mane. I'm trying to grow a mane and that's why I keep my protective styles on for as long as I do. And people are actually trying to end my life with all these plethora of suicide curses, with all these plethora of insist I settle or else curses. And I'm just like, you know what? Just, you know what? Yeah, okay. And then the Lord is like, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. And I'm running with what Jesus got to say, okay? Today is the 27th of November, 2024. And the top arc of the day is a plethora of promised dreams. I, I didn't want to record today because I'm feeling some kind of better way. Even though I'm kind of like on a precipice, I'm better than other days. To a point of wearing two earrings, double whammy. Yeah, I'm feeling a little better. So yeah, so I just wanted to watch my content, but then 
the Lord was like, it would be a travesty and a sorrow of heaven if you don't share this prophecy and then it comes to pass because I've shown you what's good. I'm, sh I'm, sh I'm, sh I'm showing you what's happening. And if you don't share it because it's good news, you know, they're saying no news is good news. If you don't share it because it's good news, then you're just going to be a doomsday, naysaying, thunderstrike, like plume of smoke type seer that I just shares warnings you know you're gonna be the kind of watch lady that can only say dooms is here but when stuff is giving um you don't share it therefore making me as god look like i'm just all about that lightning strike business god does not want only the lightning strike side of him to be shared he wants even the side of deliverance to be shared so uh, I'm here even though I don't want to record because I would much rather sit and listen to my content because I can't I can't stand the sound of my own voice when I am bereft when I'm under demonic attack I literally think I sound horrible I I, I can't I, I cringe at everything I say because I'm under so much demonic attack I'm made to dislike myself I am made to low-key hate myself and all that dislike makes me think the sound of my voice is just a clanging gong and a loud symbol like it's written in first corinthians 13. but um so that's why i wanted to not record because i'm feeling better you know uh because i've been really out of it anyway whatever but i'm here hello there what's up mm, because i gotta share the promised dreams that i got and the promised dreams that I got, I, I don't even like sharing them because hope deferred makes the heart sick. It's written in God's word. And a longing fulfilled or but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. I'm not really sure if it's and or but. You tell me what the conjunction, conjoining word is there. And I have been hoping, hoping, hoping and it's been getting deferred and you know that thing that people do where it is that they 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 basically leave room for error lots and lots of room for error refuse to throw caution to the wind and be all cup half empty about life so that they don't get disappointed when it inevitably becomes a cup half empty half empty uh my life has just been a series of murphy's law incidents where if anything could go wrong, it went wrong, it goes wrong, it keeps going wrong. And that's been happening like clockwork for a decade. And while I have not considered myself unlucky, that's not even a word that any Christian should be using, but it's the most understandable one at present because luck is, is a pagan term. Let me rather say unfortunate or unaided. Mm. Yeah, while I have not been feeling like I'm cursed, I certainly every so often am just so disillusioned with sorrow that I am inclined to imagine that that is what's going on when it can't be because I'm a child of God you can't curse those whom God has blessed okay uh, so I have been biblical about my pain but despite me being biblical and then turning off the recorder after coming in to encourage myself and hopefully you after being biblical I just go back to the drawing board of trash feeling because like i said lightning strike is around there are thunderous clouds encircling me and everything is just a clap of lightning clap of thunder clap of some kind of loud noise that is a natural phenomenon that's destructive and with me constantly hearing all of those rumblings i i can do nothing but feel like trash despite trying to make myself feel better and then there is of course the demonic attack that helps all that along uh yeah it's easier to look at the cup half empty than it full because it leaves room for heartbreak but last night the lord back to back to me with comprehension about that which is the contra of heartbreak essentially that which is the breaking of the green of murphy's law that which is the extraction of job from squalor from poverty from want that which is the uh, birth of Job's kids with the daughters being the baddest in the game. That which is essentially the exit of a nightmarish ecosystem 
of a person that has been going through so much for so long that they wanted that, that they basically looked at god and said i wish i was never born i wish i was never born that which made elijah ask god to kill him when you are that afflicted and that persecuted which much of the body of christ presently is it's hard to believe a promise that you're going to get rescued that you're going to get taken out of this particular situation so um i got like a back-to-back -back plethora of promise um like visions and dreams and words of knowledge commencing frankly like two nights ago two days ago i did not record yesterday i was backlogged by one uh, interlude so what i posted today was done day before yesterday so yesterday was just an empty day right oh the car's going yesterday was what the truck yesterday was just an empty day when it came to prophecy okay not empty day sorry um when it come when it came to recording because I, I get understanding every day there's never an empty day concerning that but yesterday was empty concerning recording i didn't record and all of yesterday and pretty much all of today even though there's just this like feeling of foreboding still chilling on my chest the demonic attack is still quite prevalent i keep getting dreams that are opposite to what it is that i am feeling and visions etc all that jazz and i'm like um okay but yeah but because of the foreboding and the melancholy and how forlorn i am i'm not sharing so this morning the lord then was like hello what is with you being nothing but a naysayer what's with you being uh, a sharer of all that of only bad news and not of good news i keep telling you this thing so please share it um i i've been so uh unprepared to share that the lord compared me to thomas doubting thomas who does not who did not believe until he saw the holes in the hands of jesus right and then he also compared me to sarah who after being told that she's gonna have a baby in a minute in a year she laughed and gone she laughed right last night i got a vision of of sarah just that whole scene in the bible where it is that she laughed at the at the at the um angel of the lord when he told abraham that she's gonna be with child in about a year i had a vision like that and even i giggled again and i laughed uh, just like sarah so sarah laughs i laugh too because i understood what the lord was showing me there he was saying that like sarah promises coming and just like sarah i giggled i laughed it off until while i was um sleeping while trying to because i'm disillusioned not only that i am jostled in bed uh when you are heartbroken you can't even sleep all that jazz so because i was in that in and out of sleep mode which is just rife with understanding that's when i get dropped a lot of understanding in that season because it's like a, a spiritual space like you're when you're halfway in sleep and out of sleep it's it's such a deeply spiritual space that so much spiritual information gets dumped in that never never land where you're not sleeping but you're sleeping you keep on dozing off but you come back in it's the best time for me to remember much of everything because satan sometimes makes tries to make me forget my dreams sometimes he succeeds but this never never space you're basically awake but you're also dreaming at the same time so i i remember it as clear as day and so the lord dumps a lot of information in that season and in that never never space where i couldn't sleep but i was sleeping i was in and out of drowse um the lord flat out said to me first pregnancy twins first pregnancy twins and i was like who that is who that is like who you talking about who that is who that is i ignore it and then as i continue to try to sleep again he says healthily carried to term and i'm like who that is who that is who that is who that is i then hear sarah yet again and i was like god are you telling me that after all this rubbish that i have endured that i am still getting married are you telling me that after all this nonsense that i have gone through that i'm still getting married for real for real a couple of days ago well it's just basically these past couple of days the lord has been telling me that i'm gonna get rescued 
that I'm going to get taken out of here. Another couple of days ago, I heard the Lord says that I'm going to go house hunting. How in the world am I going to go house hunting on zero budget, on zero rand, hollow note and ash? Is any cash in my life? Plus, I've got all this cornucopia of debt that I must first pay. So why would I like buy a house before I've paid off my debt? First, I got to get a job and then I got to buy a house. So I got to get a job and then I got to pay off the debt that I could not pay because I was unemployed for 10 years. And then I got to clear my name on the credit bureau. So much has happened. Following which I got to rebuild my credit and then only get a home loan. And all that can only happen if I get a job so when am i ever gonna go house hunting any second now any minute now and yet the lord said to me that i'm gonna go house shopping i then saw the guy in america who is the bane of my existence and many other men frankly i saw the guy in america opt because somehow i'm influential it appears to go to prison back to jail rather than kill himself he got re-arrested for whatever crime he uh, he deliberately committed so he could go to jail to save his life to save essentially what would be the tenement of his soul so here it is that i'm thinking this dude is unredeemable lost and dead as a doornail the one who bullet i said that he's gonna swallow a bullet because he's stubborn I had a dream of him getting sent back to a prison in California and the Lord saying to me he's going to die in jail. He's going to die in prison because he will have chosen to go to prison and try to see if he can't reconcile with God because he recognizes that he's wearing diapers and is incontinent and cannot exercise self-control uh, concerning me. And he imagined that the best way to keep himself from doing nonsense is to take himself back to jail to commit some crime that's going to send him to prison that he might reconcile with god because he imagines that being out as a free man is only going to keep sending him to the voodoo drawing board it's only going to keep him obsessed with me and it's only going to keep him experimenting to see what he can do he basically does not trust himself out he does not trust that he's going to ever he basically is scared of hell and he knows that that's where he's going he has come to a place of realizing that he spent the past nearly three years persecuting a child of god trying to force her to marry him and that he has cast so many spells everywhere on the left and on the right on the planet and that he just can't stop even when he wants to that rather than commit suicide because he's also facing eviction from his place where he stays he basically goes and commits some petty crime so california can send him right back into the slammer and so that he can basically reconcile with god in jail where he cannot do that which is very typical for him and that being regarded by god as problematic because why are you committing crimes but he thinks of it as I'm gouging out my eye and I'm cutting off my hand. I'm basically sending myself back to jail so I don't sin against you. So he's going to sin against God so he doesn't carry on sinning against God. As for whether or not the Lord will embrace that sacrifice, I don't know. I can't confirm if the Lord is going to take him back or if he, he, he is reprobate far gone. I don't know. All I know is that I saw him getting rearrested he went to jail where a war orange again and then the lord said to me that he is going to die in prison as for where he's gonna go i do not know as for whether or not he uh, as for again as for whether he is going to um if i don't know if he's a prodigal or a reprobate one of those that dog returned to the maya tried to crucify the son of man twice but i had dreams um, I had a dream, it was a dream, this one, of this dude out here being rearrested and him wearing orange again and going back to jail and with the Lord confirming to me that he will die there. Like, can you be that incontinent? Like, I just, I like, can you have such little self control 
that you would send yourself to prison so you don't sin against God. I mean, that's a sin to end a sin. That is the breaking of the hearts of people to end a sin. It's like the tenement of reversing a spell to try and set a person that you've bewitched free. You're like doing witchcraft in order to set a person free from witchcraft. Like, just stop sinning. Like, anyway, whatever. I had a dream of this dude sending himself back to jail as a means to stay right with God. I, I don't know. Like I said, I do not know how that's going to work out. In the sight of God, I never got told that he gets redeemed or recovered to God. All I know is that the guy is trying to commit sins to stop committing sins and that for me is like you're patronizing god like self-control is one of the fruit of the holy spirit self-control is one of the fruit of the holy spirit you could just make a decision to stop doing voodoo you could just make a decision to leave a woman alone this is the true gouging out of your eye guy in america and cutting off your hand walk away from my ministry Never click again on any of my content on YouTube. Throw away all of your occult paraphernalia and then carry on living your meager life. Just bite your wrist to stay this hand of yours from going magic wand. Maybe God might accept that sacrifice. Walk away from my mind. Like literally don't ever click on any of my content. Walk away walk away because you feel as if though your finger is too shaky singing beyonce's ring the alarm i've been through this too long and i'd be damned if i see another man in your arms he's all like i keep getting the, uh, that song playing on a loop time and time again in my ear uh with this dude basically making himself like beyonce in that music video a person that tells themselves that they'll be damned if somebody else marries a, um, a woman or man that they love depending on the gender in question here this dude is like Beyonce and he's been like Beyonce for three years telling himself he'll be damned if I ever marry someone else. He's scared of hell and he thinks that God is going to be okay with him out here like you know I don't know like drug because I mean the thing that he used to peddle drugs back in the day that was his main crime him getting busted for for drug trafficking again he could even get shot and killed in the middle of hell of all that with the police out here basically just putting him down instead of taking him in with a level of like issue in the u.s at present with police just shooting black men and you're gonna go and take a risk of committing a crime and hope that they're just gonna tell you stick them up anyway whatever he wants to go and drug traffic or hold up a liquor store or whatever so that he can get arrested but you might just find yourself getting shot by some police officer that's going to just knock you out. I don't know. Whatever. Or even the store owner where you're robbing. Or even the person with whom you're doing a drug deal. I don't like this dude is literally putting himself in the line of fire so he can go to jail. He will get killed. Like there's just a plethora. Like so many things could go wrong. So many things could go wrong. But anyway, whatever. This Oki is actually trying to commit crimes because he does not want to seek the lord's face humble himself truly receive the holy spirit that upon receiving the holy spirit he will then be given an ability to put to death the deeds of the body given an ability to exercise self-control and two if the if anything causes you to sin gouge it out if your eye causes you to sin gouge it out if your hand causes you to sin cut it off he could just stop watching my content if somebody stumbles you don't watch them like just don't like don't spend time with them just move and yeah, it's your incontinence and you wearing a diaper that's going to send you to eternal fire. It is not going to be you getting in prison that's going to save you from eternal fire. Because in prison, should you make it there, should you not get shot dead for trying to hold up a liquor store, an ice store, you're going to go in there and meet violent men who have got a bone to pick with you. They will poke and prod away at you at the eating rooms at the canteen of the prison in the showers blah blah wherever you're at and you will respond in violence you will actually be making a shiv again and i just stabbing some people in the prison again proper like it's just not uh, like there's the way as lindo talena but i'm tired of getting the door about this guy like he's just annoying but he is thoroughly trying to go to jail 
so he can stop bewitching me so he can at least enter heaven can you be that incontinent can you be that incontinent like how about you just be normal and walk away like exercise self-control for crying out loud throw away your wi-fi daughter cut off your internet supply that's that's a holy way to stop yourself from doing something that you can't deal hey like i know of people who tried to quit taking drugs by taking another drug like proper you want to stop using a very hard drug and so you use a lesser one like marijuana you want to stop cocaine so you smoke marijuana yo you're still on drugs like is that basic whether or not the other one is less you know lethal and intense and addictive and whatnot bottom line is you are fighting fire with fire you're spraying cologne on a corpse you're putting a band-aid on cancer how about you just go to rehab or quit cold turkey all drugs leave marijuana leave cocaine and just be clean like how about you just be clean anyway whatever that's what is going on with this dude in america the promise that god is showing me is that one way or another he's being stopped one way or another there is a stop sign a chock a block a break a dead one and that on his general thing that he is and he is going to from what the lord showed me die in prison should he go to prison and i can't even tell you if he's going to die and go to hell anyway if he's put himself on death row like proper i feel like if he goes to jail he's just going to be on death row because there there's no hope he's going to be depressed by those prison cells yeah and just do strange stuff in there until he dies and goes to hell anyway like he just has such a rebellion in him i whatever i'm not talking about this guy anymore but that's one of the promises that god gave me that this bugger is going to be stopped dead in his tracks one way or another but it is in his best interest to gouge out his eye and cut off his hands in a way that does not displease god because the lord will not embrace that as an acceptable sacrifice it is a blemished sacrifice it is cain out here giving god blemished sacrifices and the lord says to cain if you do what is right will you not be accepted cain sin is crouching at your door and its desire is to have you but you must master it you can't fight fire with fire and you can't out here be putting a band-aid on cancer or spraying cologne on a corpse it's not gonna do anything what you need to do is just go to rehab okay i then got a dream of some dude from my high not my high school my primary uh but like he was a big crush in primary was a friend of my exes um i liked him f we liked each other first but then i met my ex shellat first my ex pursuit first so by the time he realized that i was already taken it was too late and my ex was his friend so there was no way that even after my ex and i broke up that him and i could be together because we don't date friends that okie i had a dream of him at some high school or reunion it was like a high school yeah a high school reunion where it is that one person at that high school reunion was murdered and the person that was murdered was carrie if you guys have seen the movie carrie it's of this chicken high school who at prom uh, she's bullied and then it becomes prom queen um goes to the prom with like the prom king guy with like the most popular dude and it's all a trick and the intention is to pour pig's blood on her but carrie has tele ke telekinetic right telepathic and telekinetic superpowers and so when they do this to her all the pain that she had endured up to a certain time with her being given reprieve because she is going to the prom with the most popular guy in the school and becomes the prom queen her thinking that finally people are embracing her and then her being bullied yet again it causes such a massive trigger it causes such a massive trigger in her that carrie then goes on a homicidal spree she ends up with her telekinetic powers killing everybody if you've seen that horror movie carrie you will know what i'm talking about she goes around killing everybody in the high school she kills her uh, the, her friends well not her friends her bullies like anything that's in her path she kills them with her telekinetic powers and she ends up dying however carrie then ends up dying she gets basically knocked out because she is on a killing spree that causes retaliation that ends her life too so there's just a tragedy at that high school prom that's the movie carrie in this dream 
these buggers had murdered Carrie. They had killed Carrie and like a whole bunch of people at my high school reunion or my school reunion basically people that would be the tenement of my friends and my family members had killed or murdered Carrie or the archetype of Carrie which they think is me somebody who because you have a prophetic gifting all the bewitchment that we have endured you through after you trudged through this life conquered indiscretion and negligence on the part of your mom and then when just when you thought you were good and you had made it you had arrived just when you thought that you were never going to struggle ever again then you endured through the same nonsense again by your friends and then i got given telekinetic powers but instead of it being telekinetic powers it's my superpower of dreams and visions i am a seer the lord has given me eyes that see spiritually i see all the darkness that they do the witchcraft yeah basically i'm a, i have i have prophetic i have a prophetic gifting and my prophetic gifting is the tenement of carrie's telekinetic power uh well like in terms of this typology and carrie then goes on a killing spree these people imagine me as one who's out here killing them instead of out here trying to warn them to repent or perish they don't see me as a christian sending a warning they send me as somebody that's going to destroy their lives because they're going to be humiliated by the exposure they do not see the olive branch they don't see heaven opening up to offer them a hand of help to offer them an olive branch that they might escape the world they don't see me as one who's trying to snatch them from the flames of hell they just see me as somebody that's trying to expose their dirt hay laundry they just see me as somebody that out here is talking about their zindabas their news bulletins on a rooftop with bullet points and everything trying to humiliate their lives and frustrate them therefore they see me as somebody who is a damper to their step the buzz in the, the, the sorry the kill the buzz kill in their um, eco system they see me as a party pooper they see me as the grinch who stole christmas because they see me as somebody that could very potentially break up their families somebody who could very potentially end their lives somebody who could end their clout uh, somebody who is going to disgrace them and so therefore whatever it is that might have been their life milestones and, and the celebration of them their life milestones and the celebration of them then becomes hollow note and ash because scarabo exposed us all they don't see this as an opportunity to extract yourselves from the world i've done multiple videos before where i use that uh, story of the woman at the well the samaritan woman who Ajia approaches jesus and then the lord gives her basically her rap sheet and this woman responds by saying i have met a man who has told me everything about my life she believes gets saved and leads her own town's men to god because of the fact that christ knew all of her dirty laundry in other words her dirty laundry was not so much just to make her feel like trash but it was to show her that there is an omniscient god that sees everything and not only is he omniscient but he's also omnipresent so he's everywhere all at the same time and knows everything and this omniscient god sees all that which you did last summer you know that horror movie i know what you did last summer i still know yeah when the lord tells you i know what you did last summer is not to bring out your bunga your tuape it is not to bring out your underwear your dirty laundry essentially it is not to bring out your skid marks and all that which is dingy in your life for the sake of just humiliating you it is to show you that there is a god he exists he lives and he's omniscient as well as omnipresent and he is in a position given that he is god to also be judge over you so if you maintain this life that you are living you are going to a place called hell and in that place there is weeping and gnashing of teeth and the smoke of your torment will rise up forever and there will be no rest for you day and night so basically he sends you an olive branch to show you i know what you did last summer and then another one where he says i still know he does a sequel because he's slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love not willing that anybody should perish but that also come to a knowledge of him he takes time he's foreboding he's got a lot a lot of fortitude where mankind is concerned a days as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day so he's always like i still know he's always hooking up a sequel to the sequel to this horror movie and instead of responding like the lady at the well you respond with like Jehoiakim, King Jehoiakim, and you tear up a scroll out here, you know, like, uh, uh, Romeo is banished. Okay, I had to say that to remind myself of the word that I'm looking for there from Romeo and Juliet, but the word that I was looking for was banished. They banished Jeremiah. King Jehoiakim out here banished Jeremiah, and he could not rock up in the king's courtyards or whatever. Like, he was not allowed in the temple. He was just like cast out. 
from the synagogues and so he had to send baruch and when then they arrived at jehoiakim and his peeps they tore up the scroll they burned they didn't tear it up they burned it they burned the scroll here it is that god tells you what you did last summer and you burned the scroll the intention was not for crying out loud to just humiliate you it was to tell you repent or perish it was a watchman they stood on the wall and they said a pestilence is coming if you don't flee when it comes at you your own blood is on your hands but these people don't see the work of a watchman that way they just see it as a person out here you know exposing their dirty laundry they just see a person that's causing their nakedness to shine before all they see exposure not so much as a, an olive branch to escape that outer, outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth and for all of eternity the smoke of their torment will rise and there will be no rest for them day and night like they don't see it as an opportunity to get out because i mean really if somebody sees that which you did in the most dingiest part of the earth parts of the earth if somebody sees that which you did anonymously imaginative of the fact that nobody would ever find you out like when you did it somewhere where no one could possibly know because you were literally in the center of the arctic circle with nobody else around you because antarctica is presently uninhabited by human presence except for maybe the deep state of america i don't know mm. that's what's good or even of the european union yeah or you are just chilling somewhere like an eskimo in an igloo at an arctica where nobody else can see you and then booyah an omnipresent and an omniscient god who created the atom the atom of which looks like the orphan name angel in the scripture so therefore he's literally everywhere with eyes all over that god who tells you i know what you did last summer even in the arctic circle you then make a decision to try and kill the saint of the living god it's written in god's word don't shoot the messenger well not in so many words that proverb or that uh, scripture the um, parable that the lord explains of uh three uh, servants of his that he sends to go and collect a debt and then they shoot and kill the first servant and then they shoot well perhaps maybe not shoot there were no guns then but you get my point arrow the one servant and then the second servant also arrowed to death um yeah and then the master is like i'll send my son and then they kill the son too essentially that's god's prophets be before and perhaps after uh and then christ himself that, that that the world killed they went and they killed jesus christ even though god sent them prophets first and then christ they just kill them all just kill a homicidal baboons because they are like hitler mm. kill them all so they killed the son of man and that's then god basically saying why do you keep shooting the messenger because bottom line is i am gonna do what i'm gonna do and there's nothing you can do to prevent it even the killing of my prophets blessed are you when men revile you and say all different kinds of things against you on account of uh my name for great is your reward in heaven and in the same way this persecution they did it to the prophets who came before you so you're blessed when you are persecuted but just because they knocked you out and took you to eternity is of no essence it does not mean that the prophecy is not going to come to pass because the prophecy will come to pass anyway because that's just the way that god is so you are just shooting the messenger the delivery dude did not have it coming but because you don't like the bearer of bad news that is the delivery boy you don't like the telegram that he has to give you that says mm -mm, we're not doing this yeah you then kill the dude and then the prophecy comes to pass anyway herein lies all these randos shooting me they're killing me they're knocking me out like a domino and tomorrow should the lord allow for my martyrdom there's gonna be yet another me that's gonna rise up again popping like those games at the arcade that you keep on knocking with a hammer and the thing pops up again and you knock it knock it knock it yeah proper they will just keep popping and popping until the end of the ages where christ himself who can't be killed because he is god and he's coming the second time around as a lion instead of a lamb which is what he initially came as this time you can't do jag even though you've got your whole battle of armageddon soldier army people lots of them they god is going to knock him out by the breath of his mouth because he's god he created this world by the breath of his mouth by the word by the rhema word and with the very same word and just speaking all those intercontinental ballistic missiles all those nukes all those whatevers whatever they're just going to fall apart speaking of icbms can't believe that joe biden are just be impressed with Zelensky archer shooting an icbm into russia like wow that's apparently allegedly i was listening to joe rogan the other day it was the first time in history when icbm was ever sent even though it didn't have a nuke on it uh to another country to bomb it all along these icbms are like shows of power like you know with kim jong un archer doing an experiment and it's like oh look at that firecracker go but he's not really trying to shoot another country he's not really trying to bomb another country yeah for the first time zelensky archer be getting justified by joe biden to send an icbm to russia like what are you doing hey humankind is like that crazy ridiculous you guys i like ones that are just be sending icbms when the earth can't afford all that radiation poisoning like the earth can't afford all that massacre the earth can't afford all that world war three 
we can't afford it but nah you think that just because you're ukraine you can just send an icbm to russia when russia has not even sent icbms to you like you done went below below the belt and joe biden on his way out of office is actually trying to start world 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 three before trump takes office and i'm like you know what may the lord expedite the sitting of trump may january may december go like the speed of lightning the rest of november may it disappear like a vapor so donald trump can sit in the oval office that all these icbms coming from america are just shooting into russia will just be stayed it does not justify it like you cannot be sending such incredible weapons into other countries and think that people are not going to retaliate like how are you how do you shoot an icbm to russia it's a, it's a nuclear power for crying out loud like just keep shelling them or whatever and then pray to the lord to deliver you from the hand of vladimir putin but do not start a nuclear war thank god so far Putin has not responded because Putin is trying to take the Ukraine. He's trying to make it his own, you know? Like he's trying to create former USSR type establishment thing. So, I mean, they cannot be a radiation battle zone just flattening all of the Ukraine. That's why he's not nuking them just yet. He's he's kind of temperate in responding to that ICBM attack. But just the fact that Joe Biden be out chilling in the Oval Office congratulating that activity. That's how cray cray the world is. And I'm out trying to help you understand that when the Lord warns you not to be sending ICBM, to christian camps is for your own benefit it's in your own best interest and top of that really frankly we come in the name of love and of peace the only reason we ever wield a sword the only reason why we ever pull it out of our sheath is because you're fighting it is often in defense largely our response is always defensive as opposed to offensive we don't just come out here throwing bombs we don't throw stones we wait and wait and wait but if you insist on ransacking the living daylights out of us we are going to shoot back but even then not with an icbm at least not yet the lord is the one that's going to be out just an icbm over the planet it's called the seven years of tribulation it's called the seal judgments the trumpet judgments and the beer the be all and end all of an icbm are the bold judgments following which the lord himself is the be all and end all of the final nuke that's going to flatten the earth and neutralize every lost wicked man and then start again for us to live with him right reign righteously for one thousand years a thousand years you guys yeah so i mean all of y'all are just shooting the messenger we don't get it okay like you keep shooting the messenger and your shows of power now are like skating on thin ice because you think you're justified in your ways making like Zelensky I do apologize really I'm very sorry guys it's not gonna end well it's in your best interest to cease hostilities against the body of Christ because if you don't God is going to be the one to nuke you the Lord is going to be the one to flatten you to the ground and he's going to do it in a way that's isolated and not causing radiation poisoning across the entire geographical landscape out and knocking out saints too God knows how to do a targeted missile all up in your world but y'all don't you know how to just flatten entire villages and treating children without getting just your target so god is gonna get you out knock you out of the way because he knows how to be with precision guided missiles and everything yeah but you don't you always just hit and miss and there's collateral damage all over the show look at me passing away despite being comprehensively innocent i mean what's going on anyway you keep on sending me these icbms and god keeps on inter um injecting them he keeps on intercepting them like uh, intercepting them like the iron dome over there over israel yeah and despite the observation of all of that interception, you ought to be looking at me like, I'm Carrie, are we for real? Is that what we're doing just yet? I'm Carrie, yo, I am not out here just blowing steam using my prophetic gifting to knock you out like a kinetic power or whatever. I am using this power that God has given me that is the word of knowledge, the word of understanding, the word of wisdom, the prophetic words that God's give, give, God gives me to essentially, you know, muster up and pull up out of you. I'm gonna get tapeworm. Um, some kind of reaction along the lines of oh i have met a man that told me everything about my life i've met a man that has told me everything about my life okay that's what you must say you must say you made christ to carabo like she walked up and she actually told you what your dirty laundry is not so that you can just like walk these streets in dirty laundry and have everybody laugh at you but rather that that dirty laundry might cause you to recognize the necessity for you to go and put it in a laundromat okay and wash the laundry already like just wash your clothes get your garments clean enter into god's rest and do a better thing but instead they see me as carrie they think i'm just out here blowing steam with a great deal of wrath because i saw all their witchcraft and that which they did last summer listen when the lord gives a person a gift he enables them to be mature concerning it we are to steward the gifts that god gives us of the holy spirit we are not to use it like the way that a psychic would out here be using their ability to see certain things and to make a little bit of a living hey they're using the the, the gift that they have got as a means for financial gain that's what psychics and mediums and clairvoyants and all these other ghostbusters do 
they use gifts that are spiritual to make money that's why your sangwa must charge you and yet a christian that is truly coming in the name of the lord is not even going to expect a single cent from you just tell you that saith the lord do a better thing you currently stank it would be ideal if you put on some cologne and some deodorant after shave scrub yourself in a bathtub then you'll be good but y'all don't like it even though we come for free proper i am telling you this for free there's a chick online that i like watching on tiktok who gives counsel to women who are enduring a uh, hardship under um and, and men with little discretion and she likes to say listen ladies i'm, I'm gonna I, i'm telling you this for free so now i'm stealing her sentence because i'm that girl okay i'm gonna take her sentence yeah i'll tell you this for free this here is a salvation strategy this is a, an intervention a staged intervention for the sake of your s-o-u-l your souls okay what does a prophet a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul yet you regard me as a trained assassin i don't get it you regard me as somebody after killing your reputations what does it profit you to gain that particular reputation and then lose your soul i mean goodness gracious literally guys it does exist that place where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth for all of eternity and the smoke of your torment will go up forever the fire does not consume and the worm does not die i kid you not it exists and when i rock up here and tell you about it it is not that you might imagine me as an individual that is just content with these straight as alcohol the fact that you are butt naked in the street out here harassing all of us with your nakedness it is not that it pleases me to see all that nakedness i've been made mature the lord has given me a spiritual gift and then said with it you must do it as a watch lady you cannot just say you are rubbish and that's where it ends you have got to say you are rubbish but hey there's hope for you yet repent that you might cease to be rubbish that's what the lord has given me so i am stewarding a gift that's what i'm doing by being mature in exposing your dim bambos who else under heaven in these streets would have exposed all of that nakedness all of your six pack and your buttocks gawking at all of us unseemly are you with a public display of indecency like why or why are you walking around in the park without clothing yourselves it's wrong and when somebody comes to you and tells you that in love however not just to merely shine on all of your exposed nether regions a light but comes with a coat so that you can get clothed and then you try to kill me because I, I done shone a light on your nakedness but you were rather happy to walk around in the shrubs darkened shrouded in the veil of night with the moon not even shining on you even in the slightest the way that you're so hidden behind a bush you want to stay in that state and when Karabo shines a light, you're like, how dare you take away my shrubs? No, I'm not taking away your shrubs. I'm giving you a coat. There is a difference. See the glass, rather. Half full instead of half empty, because that's what I always are doing these feasts be trying to do. Yeah, I'm trying to see the glass half full, but it's very rough because my life is sad. See the glass half full instead of half empty. Do not see me removing the shrubs from your nakedness. See me bringing a coat. Because why are you in the bushes without clothes? That's what I'm getting at. The Lord will enable every last one of his children two that's what's good steward whatever gifts they are given um properly all right uh jesus christ will not just give a see uh, the the gift of sight just so they can be a little gossip out here in these streets telling everybody just what you did last summer he or she will be enabled to rather say to you oh my oh my but like why are you doing this wicked thing do better but the thing is man is just the scandalous baboon that has righteous works that are like filthy rags and so they've got delusions of grandeur they would like to imagine they're awesome when they're not they have got a heart that is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it yet despite that they've got like i said a delusion of grandeur they're vapid as human beings we are intensely vapid we're, we're hollow when we're, we're not we're ash we're vacuous there is nothing going on until the lord fills us so that vapid emptiness that dwells very richly inside the bones of mankind um and it makes us despite making an observation of our comprehensive depravity imagine somehow that we are good because every so often we do good stuff but really let's switch off the light for one second and watch all that looting happen look at the disaster gaze at the anarchy it's probably like the movie the purge the moment a light is switched off human beings do the most evidencing that there is no one who does good no not one for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god there is nothing good that we can do because the moment the lights get switched off we become baboons we become barbaric we become cartoons the moment the lights are switched off there is nothing good that we can do we plot and we scheme it is written in god's word that the darkness is done in that which is exactly that a dark you do it in dark places you wait for the night that's why all your occult rituals are done in dark rooms with no windows open you do everything that you do in a dingy ecosystem and it's full of blood it's full of dark no windows it is full of no lights not even a tiny little sliver of a chandelier nothing 
And that's when you start to jump and grunt. Ah, 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 yeah, ah, ah, hail Satan, yeah, ah, ah. Yeah, but it gotta be dark. You cannot do that before dark. Precisely because you like being shrouded in all that mystery. You like being shrouded in all that mystery when you're doing dingy antics. And when Karaba rocks up with a, a torchlight while you're busy like, ha, 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 hail Satan. And then next thing she's like, here's a torch. And like with you wearing like a whole vampire coat and with you wearing horns and with you dripping the blood of like a whole true human being alongside that of a goat and with you being naked despite wearing the coat of a satan or of a vampire underneath you're not wearing anything at all so you're completely naked underneath that coat and you're carrying some funny little strange knife and you're about to stab a baby and Karabo's was like thing with a light and then you you try to kill me i'm sorry what are you doing like what about drinking goat and human blood is okay and what about wearing a vampire coat with nothing else underneath is okay what about all this magic is all right what about you being in a dark dingy room with a whole bunch of lit candles is content with life like what under heaven about red walls and a black general demeanor about a room a, a darkness a filth and like i said no electricity no lights no switches just just this room with no windows what about that is giving life cute beautiful lovely excellent what about that is giving whatever is good whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is excellent if there be any excellence if there be anything worthy of praise think on these things because that's what philippians 4 verse i think 8 says like if stuff is awesome think on it like what about that is giving think on it what about your cape with nothing else worn underneath is giving excellent absolutely zero hollow note and ash i'm here for your benefit I truly am. I am here for your benefit. We have got to see, and again, God is spirit, and those who worship him worship him in spirit and in truth. The Lord is invisible. So because he is invisible, our Father, the Holy Spirit, basically God, he is invisible. Okay? Who else is going to be out in these streets telling you what in the world is good? I mean, y'all are scared of ghosts for good reason. When there is poltergeist activity in a house, you all should be hopping up and down like on the spot like your oil on a frying pan because it's otherworldly and anomalous it's aberrant for stuff to be moving on their own do you understand what i'm saying all the people in the scriptures that are be meeting with the angel of the lord were scared at first and they were, they were told fear not fear not moses with the burning bush was actually being scared initially then he was told fear not the lord knows that that which is his presence in the room is scary and so largely he sends mere mortals he sends you he sends me he sends the next door neighbor okay he sends peter and he sends jack alongside cassandra and renee he will send people to speak to you and through these individuals he will then um communicate hence why even the holy writ was written through lord speaking to men as they were led by the holy spirit because it's just easier to take in one stride all right seeing a person instead of a cloud of smoke whoa or even a burning bush whoa worse yet god himself can't nobody see him and live so because god is spirit and he is just too powerful and too pure for us in this fallen state to see him personally he then sends cran came but then you shoot the messenger i need the loom I have returned. Yes, you guys. Okay, so stop sending me ICBMs. Stop using new nukes like a child experimenting with a brand spanking new toy that the parents have bought and they're not so allowed to open it until Christmas. But this kid is just super curious and so you are just throwing um, all of your parents' rules away. Causing yourself to have a horrible holiday season because of the fact that now you're getting yelled at on Christmas because you opened your gift too early. Like what? ICBMs are not supposed to get thrown just yet. The rider on the red horse has not yet gone out war. Like stuff like that is not supposed to happen. What's with the nukes? We are supposed to have an earth to live on. You cannot be creating volume 2.0 of Babylon out here looking like radiation vibes. Like no, on the whole planet, I do apologize, whatever. You are putting on me ICBMs when it's not quite time. You're just barraging me with missiles making like Lebanon, like Hezbollah, you like Iran, sorry, and um, Lebanon these days with their 500 um, missiles that don't hit anything uh, that dies in Israel because they just keep on getting intercepted. Like when you're losing, you're losing, you're losing. When a small little tiny country that is a cup of st staggering is actually giving you a hard time, why under heaven don't you realize that there is God behind that tiny little nation? Yeah, proper. Just in the same way that why aren't you realizing that Christians are cups of trembling? Why? Why? Why when one Christian is out here ransacking you, do you not recognize that what you ought to do is down tools a surrender, make like a whole bunch of Hamas soldiers wearing nothing but underwear in the Gaza Strip, they call Rafa. How about you just make like those people after the Yahya Sinwa passes away and just down tools, like surrender. Like it's better to just go to jail. Go to jail, okay? Guys, go to prison. Go to prison rather than go into eternity like Yahya Sinwa and uh, Ibrahim Raisi and 
Sheikh Hassan Nasrallah and the whole leadership of uh, Kimang Hezbollah alongside a whole bunch of members of the IRGC and then the successors thereafter who come that just keep getting knocked out like a nail like why under heaven don't you just surrender like it's easier to live and eat three healthy meals a day in an Israeli prison as an as a Hamas militant and then live to tell the story and get born again because Jacob's trouble happens and you realize that the God of Jacob Isaac and Abraham is the one true God and so here it is that you survive as a Muslim as you're turning to Christ because he returned a second time why not make like Hamas militants like prop um, guys no it's not a, like it's a thing y'all know that a whole bunch of um muslim nations are going to give their lives to christ at the second coming right because mm. they're going to discover that the whole allah thing was an error stay alive long enough at least for the second coming of the lord jesus christ if it all christian evangelism is not doing a good enough job for you if it all we standing on rooftops being soapbox orators rabble rousers if we coming to you to tell you the gospel is not sufficient at least stay alive long enough to have christ himself upon his second return to show you that's if you make the one third of the human race that's going to survive because thoroughly like a whole two thirds of the human race is probably going to die in the tribulation but should you make it to the very end you're going to be that one muslim that properly repents because you saw christ coming even though all the way up until the second coming you were super stubborn so stubborn were you that you refused to take the mark of the beast precisely because you thought allah was god and that the antichrist system is rubbish only to find out that god even kept you from taking the mark of the beast by keeping you so devout as a muslim that you will only repent at the second coming and also reject the mark of the beast why not stay alive long enough to tell the story what's with the suicide vest what's with the jihad what's with the insistence upon ending up like Gaddafi are you be killed getting killed in front of all of American television like what under heaven is the point what is the point of passing away what is the point of dying when one meager soul one tiny little human being what is the point when they are ransacking the living daylights out of you with them having a power that is obviously not of them it is supernatural it's transcendent it's otherworldly it is a super bombing and it comes in like one little tiny package just like dynamite hey eh? it comes in small packages but then it's so crazy explosive why under heaven upon noticing the explosive nature of that dynamite are you not repenting like, i don't get it i don't get it like the smallness the sl the sliver of country that the that israel is in the middle east and then you are just and out with it however conquering so very much to a point of Alja sending out arrest warrants against its leadership like what now Netanyahu Alja be looking like Putin I'm sorry it's written in God's word come on guys let's have a discussion okay it's written in God's word that the Lord cannot stand these things the condemnation of the righteous and the acquittal of the wicked yeah when you call good evil and evil good bitter sweet sweet bitter when you are to be exchanging that which is right for wrong and wrong for right what those things are an abomination I mean really and truly international courts of justice across the board ought to arrest Vladimir Putin what he did there in the Ukraine was cray cray it was wrong it was the act of megalomaniacalism do you understand like he does not own the Ukraine he does not deserve it he is wrong but my oh my did listen to this did Zelensky and all of those Ukrainians rock up one shiny day and make a decision to start butchering russian babies did they know no i don't think so did they put russian babies in ovens and then turn them on i i literally do not think so did the ukrainians one day rock up and start raping russian women and then shooting them so many times in the genitalia that they were barely identifiable and recognizable did they go on right ahead to shoot even men to a point where you could not identify but for with dna if at all they were male or female do that ransack a uh, hijack or what's this kidnap a whole bunch of men and women and then just kind of you know make like target practice to a whole bunch of them just to make a point to Israel later on or rather Russia in this instance.